Hi Foss Tube friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. Today is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. Um, if you're new, um, I'm glad you stopped by to check out uh, what I've been up to. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate your support. I thought it would be fun to start off the year, um, Happy New Year 2022, with a bit of a whip parade to kind of go through all of my whips that I have all my works in progress and see where things are at and then maybe talk about some of the statistics from 2021 and then I also want to talk about my plans for 2022. So this isn't a typical floss tube video for me so I'm going to mix things up a little bit and I'm actually going to start with plans. Um, so if you've watched any of my videos before in 2021 I sort of started a new format with my stitching and what I would do is every month I would pick two focus projects that I would work on during the week. Um, I'd split it, you know, two, two and a half, two and a half, or two days and three days, just depending on what I felt like working on uh, between those two projects. And then on the weekends, I would spin my wheel. I have a decision wheel on my iPad and just randomly pick a project to work on for Saturday and Sunday. And then on Monday, I'd go back to my focus projects. And that worked pretty good for me. Um, it actually did help me to get some things completed. And it was just the right balance of making progress, but getting to stitch on a variety of projects. So I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to do something similar for 2022. But this year, I'd really like to focus on finishing some of my older whips. Some of the projects that I found on the go the longest because I just feel like they're they're sitting in my my basket and they don't always get um, maybe the love that they should but I would really like to finish them so I'm going to just modify um, my format from last year a little bit for this year and my my focus project number one is always going to be my oldest whip and it's going to stay focus project number one for the entire year or until I finish it and when it's finished, then my next oldest whip will become my focus project number one. Um, but then everything else is going to be the same. So focus project number two, I'm going to pick a new one every month. And on the weekends, I'm going to spin the wheel. And that's kind of where we're going to go. Um, ideally, I'd like to not do a lot of new starts. And that's Ollie. He's supposed to be having a, a nap in his crate, but he's a little unhappy. Hopefully he'll settle down. Um, so yeah, I'm, I want to limit my new starts. Um, I really would like to get my whip numbers down a little bit. So if I do have finishes, I do have a few outstanding projects in series that I, I would really like to complete. So as I finish things, I'll move those um, other projects from series that I'm currently working on into my rotation. Once all of those little outline projects are done, um, then I'm going to try to discipline myself to have two finishes before I have a new start. And I've already started a wheel with, you know, projects that I would like to start in the future. So once I get to that point, once I have two finishes, I'll spin the wheel and I'll get to introduce a new start into my rotation. Part of what I kind of want to do is get my numbers down because I, I have a certain number of project bags and my my whip basket holds a certain number of project bags nicely and I'd like to get everything down to a comfortable level. Like sure I could make more project bags to put my projects in but then I have to find other spots to store them that type of thing. So I'm uh, that's kind of where I want to where I want to go with things. So um so the other thing um I did want to mention as well you know I think a lot of us as stitchers we like some of us anyway like planning and we're always thinking ahead sort of thing. So I actually was already thinking about May this year. Um, last year, if you watched any of my videos from that time, I did a Merry Mania where I stitched on a lot of my Christmas projects. Um, but this year, I think, because again, I'm kind of focusing on finishes, I think I'm going to do a Monogamania. And I'm going to try and pick one of my projects, not necessarily the oldest one, but just one of my projects, and work on it for the entire month of May. I... I probably will still allow myself to stitch on something different on the weekends just to mix it up a little bit, use the wheel, but I'm a little bit undecided on that yet. But I, I think if I just try and stitch one thing for 31 days, I'm, I'm probably going to get burnt out on it and not want to stitch at all. So that's kind of where I'm going. So, so I thought it might be fun um, as I go through my whips. 
Um, if you see something that you like, or you'd like to see some progress on, I would love if you would leave me a comment down below and make a suggestion for which project you think I should make my monogamania project um, when we get to May. I'm gonna pause for a minute and let him out and, uh, and then I'll be right back, thanks. Okay, I'm back. I gave him a, a chewy in his bone, so hopefully that will entertain him for a little while, but you might hear him chewing away at it there, so. Um, so, with no further ra um, rambling, let's go ahead and start with the whip parade. I'm gonna show you the most recent projects that I've been working on. So with those, I will show some um, photos of what they looked like the last time you saw them. But once I get past those, I'm just gonna be showing you the projects. Um, if they don't have a physical copy, I'll put a digital copy of what they'll uh, look like when they're finished. Um, and you know, the things aren't ironed, there's park threads, but, um, we're just going to go through so we can see what all is in the bin. So, so here's the bin where I keep everything and let's get started. So my first project is, um, this is my focus project. Number one, this is my oldest whip, the North wind stocking. Um, I started this format in December, so I've been working on this two or three days a week since uh, probably the beginning or middle of December sometime. And it will stay out and in my rotation until it is finished. And here is where I am at. And again, I'll put a picture up here of where it was the last time you would have seen it. But that's where it is now. So I'm getting there. There's like another wolf over there in the toe of the stocking. And then of course there's all the detail work, all the bag stitching and everything. But I don't mind doing that too much. I like how it brings a picture to life. So. so yeah, so that is coming along quite well. I'm very pleased with that. You can tell how old it is with the uh, masking tape around the edges. Yeah, so you'll see that one until it's done. Next up, this was one that I was working on quite a bit in December. It was my focus project number two for the month of December. Um, it is spray paint, a uh, pattern that I purchased from Artisy. I'll put a photo of what it'll look like when it's done. And then I will also put a photo of where it was the last time that you saw it. And yes, there are a lot of park threads on this, so hopefully you can get an idea. So there it is. I did realize that this horse doesn't really have an eye that you can see, I don't think. Maybe I just need to stand back from up farther, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I've got quite a bit done on that and I really enjoyed working on it. So I look forward to getting back to it. So that is spray paint by Artisy. It is stitched on a piece of 18 count Ada that I dyed myself just cause I didn't want the white cause there's a lot of dark in it. And I decided to play around and try some different dyeing techniques. So I sort of dyed this a, a grayish blue color and I added a little bit of a tan color to it. Yeah, you're never gonna see it because it's a full coverage piece, but I thought it was a good opportunity to try some different dyeing techniques because if I messed it up, you'd never see it. So but at least next time I want a piece that you see it on, I kind of know how that works. So, so another one I worked on, um, it was a weekend project. It's called Shooting Stars. It's, um, it was a Christmas stitch along on the Silk stitching app. Um, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before. So I guess Christmas of 2020. And um, I'll put a picture of what it'll look like when it's done. And I will put a picture of where I was the last time you would have seen it. And then this is where it is now. So 
So I did decide when I started stitching this again, and I don't know if you can see it, but where the gold stars are, I actually decided to add a little bit of the metallic DMC that I happen to have in my stash to that. And it really does, it's really nice because it adds a little bit of a shimmery glimmer to it, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, shooting stars, pardon me. This is one of my fancy, fancy project bags. Up next is another artisy pattern. This is called Walk with Dog. Uh, it's based on the artwork by Leonid Afromov. If anybody watches um, Shiloh over at X Stitch MD, she completed um, one of his um, paintings that had been translated to cross stitch. I think she purchased it through um, Heaven and Earth Designs. And she's working on, I think, another one right now that she maybe did get um, through Artisy, I think. But so I will put a picture of what it'll look like when it's done and where it was the last time you would have seen it. And that's where it is now. Lots of colors. Still lots to go. But I enjoy full coverage, so. And I actually, this is the first time I stitched on this project using Pattern Keeper, and it makes a huge, a huge difference. I spent a lot of time, like when I'm parking, because there's so much confetti in that piece, before I was using Pattern Keeper, and I was just using um, the Good Reader app. I, like I would stitch and then I had to find the next spot I parked my thread and I was like literally having to go nee, 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 trying to find the next instance of that symbol so I could park the thread but it's so easy with Pattern Keeper because you can highlight the symbol so when you're done stitching where you are it's very easy to see where to park the thread because it's highlighted so that made it even that much more enjoyable enjoyable to stitch so the next couple were new starts. Um, so this one was my Christmas Eve start. This was a freebie that I got on the freebie table at StitchCon in 2019. So Heartstrings, I guess, is the designer. And I think they did a series of these Santas. You can see this one's September. There's apparently one for every month. This was, I believe, the only one, or there might have been one or two others, but I, I think... I just like the look of the Santa. The other ones didn't necessarily appeal to my aesthetic. So, um, but yeah, so I just thought he was fun. I um, kind of have a collection of folk art type Santas in different mediums. Um, like, you know, one's paper mache and one's like a uh, wood. Um, and I thought he just sort of fit that mold. And I'm hoping when he's done to finish him as a stand up so then I can put him on display with my other. Santa's but so that's where I got with him bit of a sleeve his beard I haven't put his eyes in yet so that's a nice little small and this other one was my New Year's Eve start um, it's Whip It by Awesome Pattern Studio so I'll put in a picture of what it's gonna look like when it's finished and I don't have a before picture because I just started it. Um, I have done a color conversion on this one. And if you've watched any of my old videos, I did the Hedgehog by Awesome Pattern Studios and I did a color conversion with it. And I struggle because you start stitching and you go, oh, I don't know if this is gonna look good, but this is where it is right now. So that's his one ear. I don't think I have enough done to decide. I changed it from those sort of pinks and purples because that's not a color I decorate with. I have no, I have nothing against the pinks and purples, um, but I tried to make it more browns and tans and grays, but I kept some of the colors that were in there because they were like highlights. So the verdict is still out on this. This is a piece of 28 count linen in the colorway time but i'm not sure who the manufacturer is it was just something i had in my stash from a long long time ago um 
So yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep going with my color conversion until I have more of it done. If I find I'm really not happy with it, I may just start over and do it in the call for colors, but we'll see. So that's with it. So this next project um, is my focus project number two for the month of January. So it is Christmas Village by Sarah. You probably can't see that very well. It's a very small picture. This is a really um, nice piece to stitch on. I really enjoy it. I think, again, it comes down to the combination of the linen. So this is a... Moving my phone now. And I'm back. So this is stitched on, I believe it's a 28 count lamb's wool linen. Um, again, a piece I bought quite a long time ago and it is a large piece. So I started over in this corner and I've worked my way across. I'm almost done the top half. And then I have, I think, I think it's three pages on the, the bottom, so. But yeah, it's just a really nice mix of, you know, solid blocks of color and, um, and then, you know, interesting motifs. So you feel like you get little mini finishes. I love the color palette. Uh, so yeah, it's just a lot of fun, fun to stitch. This is a thread I have hanging there where I finished the other day. So yeah, so that is Christmas Village. And yeah, I'll work on that until the end of the month. So I'll get a little bit more in, into it before time is up. Um, another one that I worked on, it was a weekend project. There's another one of my stockings that I'm doing. So this is Santa's truck stocking by Dimensions. I'm making this one for my husband. And again, just got a little bit more done on those presents on the top of the truck. So not a lot, but every stitch counts. And that's gonna be one of those ones where the back stitch is really gonna make everything pop and stand out. The one I just worked on this past weekend, it's one of my birthday month starts when I did my Stitch All the Horses. So this is a, a Luca S kit and it's Hunter and Foxhound is the translation. This also has a lot of parked threads. Just the way I'm working the piece, but. So that's where I'm at. So you're seeing just that's the tips of the horse's ear and the crest of his neck because he's got his head bent down, sniffing at the dog. So I'm just sort of up in here. The next one is another new start just from the other day. Um, I've neglected to mention, I think, in my last couple of videos, uh, but it hasn't mattered because things keep changing. Um, thank you, COVID. But um, I am attending someday <laughs> uh, a small retreat hosted by Jenny McStitcher. She's Jenny McStitcher here on FossTube and on Instagram. I'll link her down below. Hi, Jenny, if you're watching. Um, and so yeah, she's been planning a retreat or trying to plan a retreat that keeps getting cancelled because of COVID. Um, but we are hopeful that we're going to be able to get together uh, the beginning of March, first weekend in March, fingers crossed, but we'll see. But we're going to do a smalls exchange. So um, I picked a pattern um, that I had seen before that I thought it would be fun to stitch. So I finally decided this would be a really fun time to stitch it. Um, so it's called Cross Stitch Friends by Fuzzy Fox Designs on Etsy. I'll put a picture of what it's gonna look like when it's done. And um, this is 
mine. So I started it on some fabric. So this is an 18 count Ada. And I did dye it. I tried to dye it sort of like that greeny, taupey color that the um, model was stitched on. And I did start stitching it, which was fine. But then I was just one night thinking how the colors in that pattern would really pop on like a chocolate brown. So I just dyed this with some writ dye and I'm pretty happy so far with how things are looking. So um, I know some people don't show their smalls if they're going to retreats, but this is quite a small retreat. And I, I know Jenny sometimes watches my videos, but I don't believe anybody else that's going to the retreat watches my videos. So I don't think it's a big spoiler for anybody. And I'm not going to show the fully finished object, but I just thought it would be fun to show you guys. Um, Fuzzy Box Designs has some really uh, cute little projects. I really like her design, design aesthetic. So, um, and they're just fun and happy. And so, so there's a the little stork scissors and a pencil and the little needle threader that I've got done so far. I just have to put the needle threader's little smiley face on. But yeah, so that is cross stitch friends. Which again, I know it's talking about all of the things you use as your cross stitch friends, but I also thought it, the sentiment applied to the fact that um, I'm hopefully going to be giving that to a cross stitch friend. So, so those are all of the ones that I've been working on recently. So the rest of these are just ones that um, you haven't seen for quite a while. So, so the next one. is Galloping Horses Sampler. Again, started this during my Stitch All the Horses birthday month. Has some specialty stitches, so I thought it'd be fun to challenge myself and try something like that. And again, just a piece of 18 count Ada that I dyed in a denim blue. And I've just got the very beginning of that started. Next one that I haven't seen for a while. I look forward to stitching on it again someday. Is my Gifts for All stocking. And that's where that one is at. So these ones I'm not putting in any um, where they were previously because if you've watched any of my videos in the past, this hasn't changed because I haven't stitched on it since the last time you would have seen it. And this one is called Stallion um, by um, Anna Duplant, I believe is the, the designer's name. Um, I'll put a picture of what it's going to look like when it's finished and a picture. Well, no, I'm not gonna do a picture where it was last time because I haven't stitched on it since you last saw it, so. So that's where that one is now. And this is the one that um, I'm color completing. And then so far I've been making a little video clip um, because I take a picture every time I complete a color. And so the video clip sort of shows the progression of the picture, which is kind of fun. <laughs> Always a bit of a moaner. My next one um, is called White Horse. Um, here's a picture of what it'll look like when it's finished. This was another birthday start, another designer off of Etsy. I don't have all the notes for all my projects in front of me. I just thought that was gonna to be too hard to sift through everything. So if there's something you see that you're interested in that I haven't told you, a designer or a fabric or threads, uh, I think everything I've shown you pretty much has been DMC. Um, just ask a question down below. So. so that's how much I have completed on that. Another one I'm stitching on Pattern Keeper, which makes it really slick. Next one, it's Talon, Talon Emblem. Um, 
These are called Leaves of Love. I've done the companion piece to this called Dogwood that's finished, but not fully finished. And then this one is Clematis. So once I get them both done, then I'll fully finish them at the same time. But these are really fun because of the uh, brightness of the colors on the um, black fabric. So you saw this one recently because I stitched on it, I think, in November. That's that one. Now, this one. This is the Carolyn Manning Designs temperature cell from I think 2019 that I thought I wanted to try. Um, I have to be honest. I'm probably going to abandon this project. I'll put a picture of what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, and I decided to do this in, um, like in retrospect for 2020, for the temperatures in 2020. So that's what I have so far. But if I'm being perfectly honest with myself and with you, I don't really enjoy stitching on it. I'm not a fan of the sharp points all the way around the edges that just doesn't appeal <laughs> appeal to me um and it's very tedious because like you've got to look up all the temperatures from the days and um you know and then find that on the key and yeah so I think I'm just going to abandon this project um I obviously can appreciate doing a temperature cell in real life and you know trying to do it every day but I know that probably wouldn't work for me either I'd probably get tired of having to feel like I had to you know stitch it every day or then you're constantly catching up you know for the whole week or whatever so um I, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn and I hate to think that I'm quitting on something or giving up on something but at the end of the day even if I finished it I don't think I'd want to display it or anything so there's other things I do want to display, so I might as well spend my stitching time on those. So, so that is probably going to be abandoned, but I haven't committed to abandoning it yet. So we'll see what happens. My next one is uh, my DMC chart. I'll put a picture of what it's going to look like when it's done here. And... That's where I'm at now. So this um, this pattern, again, if you're new, maybe, um, I haven't heard this, and if you've heard it before, I apologize, but I have been in the process of kind of reorganizing my floss storage, my DMC floss storage, basically. How I store my floss, how I use my floss, how I kit up my projects with my floss. Um, I was getting tired of like, constantly looking for colors and not remembering what project they're in type of thing. So I have created a master set of floss that has every color in it. And I pre-cut those flosses into 36 inch lengths because a lot of the projects I do are two over two. So then I can do a loop start. And so when I kit a project up, then I just pull, you know, two, three, four lengths of that floss, however many I think I might need, or at least a couple to get started, um, and put those in with the project. And then I always have my, my master set there to draw from. And if I empty one of those master set bobbins, then I have a little container by my wallet and I just put the bobbin in there. The next time I go to town, I go to Michael's and I grab the colors that I need and then I refill the bobbin and put it back in the box. And as I finish projects, then I have like a working set, I call it, of bobbins where I'll put those ones that have been in projects. So when I kit up a new project, I look in there first in the working ones and if the colors are in there, then I just throw those in and if they're not, then I go to the master set and pull the colors out. And that has been working really, really well for me. So this particular product project it's helping me because whenever, whenever I, I usually do like a, a column at a time, whenever I do that column, I pull all those colors and I um, cut them into the pre-cut lengths so those colors are ready 
the next time I want to use them. Or um, there were a few of the new newer DMCs that I didn't have in my my full set. So, you know, then I've gone to purchase those and this sort of is pointing me to some of the ones I'm missing out of my set. So, so it's been kind of nice that way to help me organize my floss. So. The next one that I have, oh, and it's stuck. I'm gonna just do this because it's stuck to this vinyl and I don't wanna rip it, so I'll gently remove it later. But So this is Madame Chantilly Celebrate Christmas, her three-tiered tray. This one I haven't stitched since I started it back in May when I did Merry Mania last year. This is on a 32 count um, platinum linen. And that's what I have so far. So pretty. I really like Madame Chantilly's patterns. Someday I hope to maybe do more of those tiered trays, but let's get one done first and go from there. Uh, my next one is a fairly old project. When I first came back to stitching, this is one of the first ones I bought. My, I was gonna say my first trip to the needle workshop, but I think they didn't, I, I think I'd seen it before that, but they didn't have it in the shop. So then I came home and ordered it online, but it's called Behind the Bit by White Willow Stitching. is what I have so far. Almost done. Getting down to the nitty gritty. So this is my next one. called horses I call it grazing horses and again I can never pronounce the uh, kit makers name but that is it and I don't have a lot done in this just this little dandelion in the top corner So this next one, again, not much to show, but this is one of the series that I'm still trying to complete the series. So it's one of those ones that I have some sitting in the wing waiting to start, but it's the Snowflower Diaries Joyful World Cell from a few years ago. I don't know if it was 2018, 2017. Um, but this one, I believe, is the September one. All I have is the start of the border, so I would have to look back and double check which one I was working on. Um, I'll put the September one here so you can see. I'm pretty sure it's the one with the owls that I was doing, so. But that's all I have done on that list of order. But I have completed several of those. Um, one of the ones that's still in here, this is the last one that I completed, is the March one. So I would like to get those done so that I can get the, uh, I have a frame that I want to display them in and I need to sort of uh, put some fabric and stuff in the backing of it and I'm using magnets and things to put the different months in there. So, And then last but not least is my poor sad little tree hugger cell. So this one I was doing really, really good up until about August, I think. So that's up until the end of August. So I still have September, October, November, December's to do. And I will, I'll finish those. I've just put this into my uh, 
my whip wheel now. So if it comes up, I'll work on another tree. So that, I believe, is all of my whips. I may have missed something, but I think that's everything. Um, so let's go over some statistics from 2021. So my current whips as of today are 22. Um, the whips that I carried over from last year into, um, like from 2020 into 2021 was seven. I did 15 new starts in 2021 and I did 13 finishes. So that's pretty good because sometimes I feel like I don't finish a lot because I have a lot of big projects, but obviously I finished quite a few. Now, a lot of those were like the little series ones, right? Like that little Lizzie Kate Rolodex that I did like a lot of those finishes are those little guys too so but yeah so 22 whips isn't terrible but it's a little more than I'm comfortable with um I'd like to be closer to 10 to 12 but um we'll see how the year goes see how the year goes stay tuned um so yeah so that is most of what I was going to show today the only other thing I wanted to do a really quick little shop update um and tie it into a giveaway so um, in my last video, I was showing you some of the things that I had been you know, trying and making. And one of my favorite things that I had made was a combination coaster and thread catcher, or some people call them thread beds, um, which I'm really enjoying having on my little side table when I stitch and I can put my, my beverage on the coaster part and that anchors it. And then I can put my little thread ends or if I pull a length of thread, um, I can set it on the felt so that it doesn't you know, get caught on my sleeve or fall on the floor or wherever they end up going half the time. Um, and so I was really, I was really enjoying having that. So I thought I would make a few to sell in my Etsy shop. So I decided I would use up some of my scrap fabric. So they're all scrappy like this. So this is just the outside. And so this is the inside. So you set your drink here and you put your thread, thread ends here. This is some white felt. Um, I find it's even handy. I, I often just stick my needle in the felt. Um, and yeah, and you can just sort of fold it up even with your threads and your needle in there and tuck it in a, a bag or I put mine in a drawer when I'm not stitching so my dog or cat don't get into it. But so there's that one with the pinks and browns and then this one with some bright spring colors. Wow. This is my favorite. These are, I like these colors, grays and greens and blues. And this one, it's blacks and reds and grays. So this is my first one that I made and I was using up my scraps of fusible fleece on the inside. And so you can see there's a slight line here because I just sort of adhered them to the back, but it, this one separated a little bit on me. So after that, I started taking the time to zigzag them together so they would stay together. But so this one, because it's imperfect, um, I, I, I don't think I'm going to put it in the shop to sell it. But what I thought would be fun is I'm going to do a giveaway. So if this is something that appeals to you or something you'd like to try, um, I would like you to leave a comment down below and tell me, number one, what your favorite drink is when you're stitching. You know, do you like to drink tea, coffee? Are you somebody that likes to drink pop, soda? Um, are you just a water drinker? Do you not drink at all? Um, so yeah, the word I'm going to be searching for is drink. So make sure you use the word drink. The other thing, number two, I would like you to do is again, um, tell me which of the whips you think I should focus on for monogamania. So the, those are your two criteria to be entered into the drawing for the giveaway. Um, obviously it'd be nice if you like and subscribe, but I'm not gonna be checking any of that stuff. So, um, and obviously you have to be over 18 or have permission of an adult cause you're gonna have to give me your address. I will send it anywhere in the world. So feel free to enter and um, yeah, we'll have a little fun, do a little giveaway. So that is everything I have for today. Um, I was trying to keep it short so that um, I didn't tie up too much of your time today. I appreciate you stopping in to see what um, what I've been up to. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep the draw open. I usually uh, make a video every month. So I'm going to keep it open until um, the 15th 
of February. And, uh, and then I will be doing my drawing before my next video. So if you're watching this and Valentine's Day hasn't come around, you can still enter. If it's after Valentine's Day, it's probably too late. But anyway, I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.